up, everybody? Nostalgia Goggles 4-3 here. Thanks so much for joining us for round two of the 1996 NBA playoffs. Let's get right to it. We hope you're all doing well up there. Let's do this. What's up, Spitz the Greatest? Sorry, I was a couple minutes late. Children's bedtime went a little longer than expected. As a reminder, Chicago, huge upset. Michael Jordan's last dance, right there. Unacceptable, well, I don't see that you have a whole lot of choice. I you got a choice, you can stop watching. It happens, either way. Own up to it. So tonight, Muggs Bogues start a point guard, Sean Rutherford, and tearing it up these playoffs, he gets to start. So does Ellis. And we're actually going to start in his first appearance in the playoffs. He didn't play at all the first series. Antonio Davis, because he is part of the best lineup featuring the one, the only, Ed Pinckney. We are going to get Ed Pinckney onto the point per game leaderboard if it kills us. Quick reminder, uh, we will not get all 10 of the positions. Because that's just, the math doesn't work on that. Right now we have four. And... It is hypothetically possible for us to get six. And that's what we're shooting for this game. We're going to try to keep Popeye Jones, Sean Rest, and Dale Ellis on the list, as well as Tracy Murray. Then we'll get Hubert Davis back on there and Ed Pinkney on there. Uh, Pinkney's got to score 64 for that to happen. Uh, Davis has to score 34. Murray has to score 33. And Ellis has to score 10. I think we can do that. We'll give that a shot. Before we get started, 10% of anything I make tonight goes to the Retina Foundation in the Southwest, envisioning a world without goggles. I'm trying to cure blindness, they're doing good for me. My audio is really low. Hmm. Let's see if I can do it. Check, check. Mostly my mic. Let's see, maybe I'll move this a little closer to my person. How about that? Is that any better? Should I crank it up? Better? But still low. Check, 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 check! How about now? Not quite clipping. No, that clipped a little when I yelled. That sound good? That's better? Alright. Let's do this thing. And we're still okay. Player one, NG, that's me. So late, I didn't even get for the bourbon. So I'm from Toronto, Ontario. I like those odds. I think we got a shot. Penny Hardaway, Nick Anderson. Three D, Dan Scott. And let's give it up for Horace Grant. Look at those goggles. It's a thing of beauty. Of course, Shaquille O'Neal. At this point, my tolerance may be higher than yours for alcohol. Well, that'd be a first. I was thinking about you earlier today. It's great. So I think you appreciate this. I uh, I bought a sound bar at, uh, for the TV. It came today. I mean, obviously, I got the cams for this, but um, hooked it up, tried it out. Been very pleased with it so far. And we are already player locked on Ed Pinkney. Two down, 62 to go. Those goggles are terrifying. Horses? No, look at those. Those are beautiful. Look at that right up there. The corner. It looks like the Lone Ranger or something. Great. Mugsy, Mugsy. Some bars are such a wild card. Well, so I haven't, I didn't get much of a chance to uh, test it out. The kids were with me, so I used uh, the Lego Batman movie, which is probably not the best reference material, but it was the only uh, kid-friendly um, Blu-ray I had that has an Atmos. 
so I decided to work with that. The soundbar I got was a Yamaha, um, a YIS 108. Ooh. Last year's model. Price range well. So I got it um, when it was new. It was 200. Um, I got it on closeout because this was last year's model. That was a nice layup. I don't think I've approached it that angle before. Exactly. Um, because I don't want to have things with microphones in them um, that don't need to have microphones in them. And this year's model had uh, Alexa integration. And I, I don't need that. So audio technology advanced in the last 12 months. Well, so when I was originally looking at uh, sound bars, I was looking at the 107 from two years ago. And that one didn't have built-in subwoofer. You have to connect external ones. This one does have built-in subwoofer that added whatnot. And then, like I said, added the Alexa, but I don't want that. So I got this one on a closeout for 120. Seems nice. Seemed like a good price. Um, and it had really good reviews. Basically, a, a lot of folks had said, if you are looking for a sound bar, it's a good one to get. Uh, because it's pretty entry level. And to get a sound bar that sounds a lot better, you're going to have to spend enough money. You might as well just get like a nice 3.1 set. Ed Pinkney blazes by Shaq. Has not missed a shot. 12 points already for Ed Pinkney. Oh, nice. I almost threw it back to myself in the back court, but that I remember the other day. Fake me with the quickness, exploding to the basket. You have an entry level soundbar and it's better, like better than the TV speakers. Yeah, so this has, not I'm happy with this. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you why I'm happy with it. I don't want to go all the way to surround sound um, because it is a lot to maintain and my wife hates it. Um, but what's, there's the Pinkney we know and love. Um, she just doesn't like sound coming from behind her when she watches TV, which is fair enough. A lot of the mixes aren't that great. So, like, really all I was looking for was more comprehensibility and dialogue. Oh, man, I've, I've been talking. I've been listening to the chat. Hello, Coach Grab 127. Right, you don't need surround sound. You watch a madman. I mean, I'm just as likely to be watching some criterion thing that's a uh, monoral. Um, so as I am watching something with that, so like, I don't need more than I need. I just want to be able to, and am I doing a season? Yes, I am. Um, so this is the playoffs. Um, we, uh, are in the second round, uh, taking on the Orlando magic. Yeah, so I was able to test out the uh, the soundbar a little bit. The uh, the dialogue was a lot better. Um, you could really hear the bass. I mean, especially, like I said, I had the kids there. I was watching with Lego Batman. So there's a lot of rumble in Will Arnett's performance, and that did well. And I found even, like, with the music, I could hear the, like, background singers. Like, I could distinguish them with better than what I had with the TV. Cool, thank you. Did I do a full season or a shortened season? Um, I attempted a full season. Um, and then my, uh, the battery died in my SNES cart, um, 75 games in. Um, so I recreated the rosters and, uh, trying again, starting from where the records were. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was not ideal. At least it was far enough that the playoff, um, it was mostly garbage time anyway. The playoff records were pretty well set, um. So we, uh, we ended up being the number one seed. Um, the idea behind the season was I wanted to try to experiment and bring, like, modern principles into the 90s. Um, so, like, a lot of a lot of three-point shooting in the paint. We're not doing mid-range jumpers. Um, so I did uh, the expansion draft for the Raptors with that in mind. And so we did very well. Very well doesn't cover it. We do, Well, we, we did dominate, it's true. We only lost two games. Oh, Ellis. That notwithstanding. 
this room is you did a fantasy draft and had a converse to Tom's room with the teams you drafted. That's awesome. Sounds like fun. Well, what game were you playing? Live 98, nice. PC, PS1. Like cool players from that game, Hell of Fantasy Draft. That's awesome. Who was your first pick? Lost in the finals. That's not bad. First pick overall was Shaq. Your first pick was Joe Dumars. He dominated in simulations you were in. Yeah, I mean, both, that makes sense. Maybe not 98 Joe Dumars. I was, uh, when I was a kid, I was a Pistons fan. I was always a uh, big fan of the, like, the bad boys, like, the defense first, hard-nosed, aggressive style. So I've really developed an appreciation for the Raptors as we've been going through this season. Com versus Tom play point cards basically dominate us in the SNBA live games. Yes. In uh human versus com games too. We've uh we found that the like Shaq has been kind of a non factor in a lot of these games and Penny has been been the one we've had to watch during the season. So it's looked up Madden ninety seven on the Saturn and it looks horrible. Even by standards of the time, makes your eyes want to bleed. Only 32 games. 30, 32 games are just ugly. Oh, that's true. Madden 97 creative player is fun, but the gameplay is pretty bad. I haven't played enough football games to really... Uh, have an opinion one way or another. Oh. Ah. I've been watching the last dance. No, I need to catch up on it. I've been <laughs> I've been doing this act. Um figured I need to watch it though. I've been seeing like People tweeting about it, but I have not uh, not had a chance to to kind of watch it myself. Have you? Is it good? Pink me. Let's do this. Come on. Ugh, that looked like it was gonna go. This stream does get in the way of reality. It's true. I mean, I got, wow, 86%. That might be the best quarter we've had. With that Pinkney as well. So he's halfway to his goal. So what we're doing, uh, for those who missed it, is uh, we had a patron request to try to get everybody on the uh, points per game leaderboard. And I did the math, and that's not possible. But we have four right now for the playoffs. We're trying to get to six. So Ed Pinkney needs to score 64. He's already got 38 after the first quarter. Um, we also need to get 10 for Ellis, 33 for Tracy Murray, 34 for Hubert Davis. Um, so we'll, we'll put in a Davis lineup, let him run for a little bit. Uh, so all the lineups I'm doing at this point, I've got enough data. Um, it does appear to be uh, very driven by um, the other players who are on the court with you, how anybody does at any given time. Um, so this is the best performing lineup we had with Hubert Davis. Uh, so far this year. Uh, let's see, Murdoch, uh, Davis, Ellis, Jones, and Wright. Bugsy Bugs, yeah. So uh, we're going a little bit uh, ahistorical um, on this. Like I said, during the expansion draft, we took, I mean, realistic people who were actually unprotected 
the draft and change things up a little bit. Um, and then uh, my patron requested a trade deadline. The, uh, San Carlos Rogers down to Charlotte the Mugs. The Mugs actually did play for Toronto later and was traded for BJ Armstrong at some point in his career. We got Rogers for BJ, so close enough. Another news, Fitz of Grey, a Saturn HGMI cord has uh, been reordered. Coming in, very exciting. Oh, we did that while I forgot to tell everyone to play defense, too. All right, guys, play defense. I'm going to switch our player lock to Davis. Shooting for 34 for him. Given that we got 38 with Pinckney in one quarter, which would be too insurmountable with an outside shooter. There we go. Good start. No, Pinckney, you've had your... Oh, wait, that's Jones. That's right. Where is he? There we go. All right, good start. Now, Muggsy took a while to find his place on the team, but uh, we eventually adjusted. Uh, found a role for him. DC Kaufman, how are you? Haven't heard from you since the uh, the Sambar portion of the conversation. Any comments? Did a shortened season of Tecmo NBA basketball like two years ago. Average a triple double with Michael Jordan and points, rebounds, and blocks. That's awesome. We actually had uh, Damon Stoudemire uh, for most of the season was on the uh, blocks leaderboard, which made me happy. On contact. Can't get it over. Yeah, it was great. And it was especially great that I typically, so as you see, usually I'm player locking somebody or other, but I wasn't usually player locked on point guard. So that was mostly the AI. But that actually gets back to what you were saying earlier about opposing point cards, commenting on, not commenting, dominating uh, on offense. Uh, they just, he just had so many more opportunities. Rebound right, kicking it back out. No, rebound right, kicking it back out. That's why I fetched the rebound to grid. Technically, it doesn't count assists as a stat, so you had to go for blocks instead. I can't believe that. Oh, wait, talking about NBA basketball, so the NES one. DC Kaufman having a boss battle in Final Fantasy VII. Good luck to you, sir. I guess it makes sense they don't count assists as a stat. They don't count assists well in this game. There are times that I take it basically coast to coast and they credit it, and other times I feed a guy, he doesn't even dribble, and then there's no assist. It's a little maddening. There we go. Hold that down, right? Toronto Riot, trade deadline acquisition, just like real life Raptors. Great pickup for us. Not enough bits to record assists. You need 32. That's the minimum. If you got 31, that's not enough bits. What's my favorite basketball game? That is a really hard question. Um, my favorite sim... Oh, I don't know. Um, might be 2K14. Um, I didn't get into it enough to really 
appreciate it, but like just the ability, like the, the kind of the variety in post moves alone. Um, oof. Like I felt like I was playing Street Fighter and I just needed to like memorize all the combinations. Brian Shaw with the charge. Um, so that was cool. I really liked the um, the way that they incorporated team chemistry in that game. Stopped after 2K5. Yeah, well, fair enough. Um, yeah, I mean, from this era, I actually think the sweet spot for the NBA Jam series was Hang Time, which I know is not, like, a super popular opinion, but I thought that they added enough to make it uh, strategic. And... Uh, but without adding so much. And by the time they got to Showtime, where there's actually like free throws and stuff, then it's not really NBA Jam anymore. But I really liked the double dunks. Um, it felt more balanced to me than, than TE. Um, so that's probably my pick as far as retro games. I also have a real uh, soft spot for uh, Street Volume 2, um, especially the single player mode in that game. Um, so those would probably be top three. Yeah, Hang Time on 64, that's where it's at. Not on purpose, you just stop buying games and consoles, and now you're a retro guy. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? I mean, even 2K14 is almost retro at this point. Like, I'm talking about the last-gen version, which is about to be two gens ago. Digging through a box of old games last night. Spits the greatest. NBA Jam on Sega CD. You're not going to stream that. Well, color me disappointed. How are we doing here? 68, so you must have 30. Yep, 30. So Davis, two more threes, and he's good for the night. Too many plugs to get it running. You need to rewire your house. The whole house. How about you, Coach Crab? What's your favorite uh, basketball game? Lucky bounce. Oh, uh, no worries. Uh, so, uh, the season was actually 75 games through. Um, we only lost, you know, the garbage time stuff. We'd already clinched the number one seed and everything. Um, so uh, what I did was basically just started over. I went back and it was kind of a comedy of errors. I also uh, Evernote had lost my um, my roster notes uh, because I was trying to get mostly realistic rosters, um, you know, more or less. I did some changes based on what I was doing, but assumed everyone else did most of the same stuff. So I set the rosters all back up. Um, I went and reviewed the tapes, looked at the way the records were. Um, at the time that we stopped, um, at the time that we lost everything, and then just set up a playoffs. Um, as a, so basically, we just suspended the season. Um, picked it back up. Looking really good. Oh, one too many. Here I go talking. I'm losing track of what I'm doing. But yeah, so I mean, we didn't... In the grand scheme of things, if we were going to lose it, it was not, like, all that bad of a time to do so. NBA Jam TE on SNES or NBA Jam on Sega. Really like NBA Give and Go on SNES. So I've never played Give and Go. I was a, a Genesis kid. Um, so I was playing stuff like David Robinson Supreme Court before uh, before Live happened. So tell me more about uh, TE on Super Nintendo versus uh, regular on Genesis. What's your... Uh, it's a very specific uh, recommendation. Or shoot it for a while. Three. Now you're calling timeout.
Right. Jam on Sega is better than Jam on Super Nintendo for a few reasons. Sega has music. All right. The commentary is better. The sound effects are better. And the player's pictures look better. All right. All good reasons. Ellis was our star during the regular season. Uh, shoe in for MVP voting, uh, but hasn't uh, hasn't been showing up quite the same way in the playoffs. Thing and we've been doing a lot more weird stuff in the playoffs. All right, 83 points in the first half. That is on pace. Good. Hubert Davis leads us with 39. Not a lot else. Horace Grant, my fellow goggle enthusiast. Ellis suffered from the reboot, but he hasn't been the same. True. The suspended season just really got to him. Right, DC Kaufman, I'll, uh, I've got my opinions on this, but I want to hear uh, your guys first, so I'll just uh, read that. Was Sega Music better than an SNES in general? Just let that sit there. What do you guys think? Whose first and middle names mean the little warrior in Islam? Hmm. I'm assuming uh, they're talking about current at the time. So I, I don't know the language, but I'll just guess uh, Mahmoud Abdul Rayu. Anyway, big thanks to our patrons. Tim Troy, humanitarian and philanthropist. Fitz the Great, Dr. Ambassador Dormander. Thank you for your support. Appreciate it. As a reminder, 10% of anything that I might bring in tonight goes to the Retina Foundation of the Southwest. They're uh, doing work uh, trying to cure blindness in the very old and very young. Uh, if you feel so inclined, there is a direct support link in my uh, Twitch profile and in the YouTube description. I'm not affiliated with them at all. I just uh, found them in like what they're doing. Mood of Glorayuf. Quick trap, I guess, similarly. Right, so we got some not necessarily lots of excellent SNES music. Spitz the Greatest thinks the SNES has the superior sound chip. So I think it, it's game dependent. Um, specifically with NBA Jam, what we were talking about, uh, the Super Nintendo version wasn't very well optimized and didn't have music at all um, in it. So, yeah, the, although there are some who think that the gameplay is still better, um, I don't have enough experience with that to have a horse in that race. I will leave these guys at least until Alice gets gets to 10. Um, but the Genesis didn't really have a sound. It wasn't sample-based the same way the Super Nintendo was. It actually had a Yamaha synthesizer um, in it. So if people knew what they were doing, they could get great sounds out of it. And if people didn't know what they were doing, they got terrible sounds out of it. Second version of NBA Jam was more challenging. Wow, really? Because I'm not sure it was even all that all that challenging by itself. Ellis, I think that's nine for him. The drones were much better. Okay. So good reason. Penny Hardaway. Posterizing Ellis. That was a bad luck. Shouldn't have done that. Rebound Grant. That's a Hardaway again. Great steal by Davis. Ellis just cannot find the basket. When I'm on very hard, you'd lose once in a while on Sega. You'd never lose even when not paying attention on SNES. Well, fair enough. Come on, Dale. Just put it in the basket. Come on. All right. Layup time. Or short jumper time. Alright, is that it for him? We don't have time to waste. Okay, so Ellis is at 11. He needed 10, so he's good. Davis is at 39. He needed 34, so I overshot that a little bit. Uh, Murray's at 0. He needs 33. And Pinkney's at 38. He needs 64. We are still in striking distance. It's going to be a bit of a challenge. 
PC Kaufman. Thought other games like Aladdin and Earthworm Jim also had better sound than Genesis. Wow, even Spitz and Grace is calling for us to sit Alice. After all he's done for us, average about 40 points per game in the regular season, an eight minute game. Dale Ellis went to Tennessee, your alma mater. Cool. My, uh, I didn't realize he went there. My sister lives in Tennessee. Did not go to school there. Is there now? All right, so we need a Murray Pinkney lineup. Is what we need. So we'll put Muggsy back in. Uh, Restbridge. Murray. Pinkney. And Wright can stay, I think. Those Restbridge, Murray, Pinkney. Right. You're not giving up on Ellis. You just want him to sit tonight so he comes back mentally stronger tomorrow. There you go. If he keeps playing, he's just going to get further demoralized. I'm glad you've uh, given this some thought. All right, T. Murray, the guy I expected to be uh, the star player, a uh, real-life Raptor this season. Um, did not pan out that way during the regular season. Yet, Murray actually has the highest uh, three-point rating in NBA Live 96. But... For some reason, did not shoot it as well as Dale Ellis. Nope, we're sitting this lineup. Okay, sure. Throw it down. It's gonna call timeout. Can't resist that. That one's for you, Spitz the Greatest. Patron at our buy a bucket tier. Thank you for your support. I can't even hand check him. There we go. Should explain the importance of lineups with new viewers. Sure. So what we found is I've got a whole uh, spreadsheet about it, getting the plus minus. Uh, I like how they point after dunking enemy 1195. Oh, you know, man, that's bringing me back. I, uh, I did 96 because of the expansion draft in this, but I haven't, I haven't played 95 in years. But man, that just, that's flooding back. That's cool. Um, so actually, you get to experience the lineup here. Um, so you saw that lineup. Orlando was scoring. We generally weren't. Our defense was a little bit off. I'm going to change one player out. And I suspect that is going to make a big difference. That's what we found is the team chemistry seems to be lineup based. Um, I've been meaning to try to track down someone who actually worked on the game um, to see if they'd be willing to confirm that theory. But see, there you go. We just hit that shot. And that's not just the game engine being a fluke. Like if I had let that lineup stay in, we would have been shooting like 20% in the field. Espit says, lineups are everything, and you know it immediately. So all kinds of crazy things about 1198 lineup-wise. Yeah, so tell me about the CPU versus CPU. Did you just completely let them go, or was it like coach mode where you were managing stuff? Or I mean, it sounds like since you're saying it got crazy. You just let the AI do its AI thing. But... Curious. So Tracy Murray has not missed a shot uh, since we took Theron right out and put Oliver Miller in. But if you look at the performance, either in the season or the playoffs, Wright has just contributed significantly more uh, than Miller has, even with a shorter time on the team. Um, mostly what I track is uh, just uh, unadjusted plus minus, uh, because anything more than that is just 
time that I don't have, uh, candidly, um, to calculate it out. But I found that it, it's a pretty good um, stand-in for how effective a lineup is. And it really, like, a player's individual um, unadjusted plus minus. I mean, I track it just for fun, but it doesn't make a huge difference. The lineup is... I picked on the Live 98 because I did auto substitutions. On do give and go, but that game doesn't have comp versus comp. It's all on your YouTube channel. Every game from the season plus. Cool. So your YouTube is uh, Coach Crab 101. Yeah, let me start, try that again. Uh, Coach Crab, both with K's, 127. All right. I'll have to look into that. Some with commentary from the streamers. All right. Put that on my list. I'll put that on the top of my list. You're even ahead of the last dance. Nope. Okay, so I missed one, but that's still like, what, five or six? Something like that. How many does he have? Twenty-four. All right. So he needs another nine or more. We'll give him twelve, just as a buffer. Uh, the reason Hubert Davis fell off the list is I was uh, targeting Clyde Drexler, and then uh, he had a really good game. Uh, brought up his uh, average. Knock me off. Sometimes teams would just straight up not play defense. They'd stand almost under the basket and give up wide open shots. So that's funny. It's actually sort of the opposite. You may have noticed that I am not playing a lot of defense. I just stand under the hoop. And the reason I stand under the hoop is if I'm not standing here, then the point guards will drive in and shoot a layup every single time. It's virtually impossible to block a layup in this game. Horace Grant, 100% from the field. Also, not a lot of uh, distant shooting in this. Penny certainly had opportunities, although a lot of those misses are actually clock shots. All right, so this home crowd loving it. We have doubled their score. Up 60 going into the fourth. Terrible pass. Go. Think he needs one more. Yeah, one more. Just give a little push. The guy who won the championship in Lab 98, his team would shoot the most threes. He had Kevin Johnson and Steve Nash, and they would just destroy teams. Yeah, there you go. Just like real life. Yeah, there have been games that I have made fewer shots than the computer. And I have still won by a comfortable margin just because so many of them were threes. I mean, obviously not recently. Once I got, once I figured out the lineup thing, actually. And once I figured out that lineups weren't going to get better if I missed my first two shots, I just need to sit them. Um, that's when things really opened up. Okay, you see we're shooting 70% from the field, 63. Right, so we're going to say, Oh, Shaquille Rashawn O'Neal. There you go. That little warrior. Shaquille. Joe Dumars, Mitch Richmond, Patrick Ewing, Tim Duncan, and somebody at small forward. That's a solid lineup. I take that. Richmond was a good, uh, good three-point shooter, and Tim Duncan, obviously, amazing. All right, so Murray's there, and Davis is there, and Ellis is there. We just need to get Pink in there.
so fatigue doesn't matter hugely, but it does a little bit. Uh, let's give Damon some minutes. He hasn't played yet tonight. Duncan kind of sucked. He always missed shots in the fourth quarter. Wow, that's unlike him. Although, I guess that was young Duncan. <laughs> in the game, you meant, not in real life. <laughs> yeah. Good clarity, you can't take anything for granted on the internet. Uh, let's see. Murray can stay, Pinkney can stay, and we'll put Tony Davis back. Rookie Duncan, that's right. Yeah, that's true, because in this season, the Spurs were uh, had a good season in 96, so it was the next year that Robinson missed. Getting them the draft pick. Before, uh, you know, in the in the before times when I thought we were going to have a normal season, or I was wondering if uh, Golden State was going to have a similar situation. I didn't look too closely at who was in the draft class, but it seems like, you know, losing Steph and everybody give them a shot at a juicy draft pick. And then if everybody can come back healthy at some, you know, Steph and Clay can play at the level they were playing at before. Could have another dynasty. In a bigger market this time, Adam Silver will be thrilled. Nice. Suffocating defense. I love it. Pinkney throwing down. Wow, Forrest Grant. Must be the goggles. Pink. The short jumpers are brutal in this game. If you don't get the layup animation, you better get ready for an offensive rebound. Steal Murray. Or that. Yeah, celebrate, Ed. You've earned it. I think that's a lot of basketball games. Short mid-range jumpers for death. Some would argue in real life the mid-range jumpers are death. So I'm trying to think about if there are any other quirks uh, that we learned about the game uh, the course of the season. So the reason I picked the SNES version instead of the Genesis version I grew up with, well, there were two reasons, really. Uh, one is the uh, the number of buttons, like there's actually a steal button, although I didn't realize I'd need to spend my time parked under the basket, so I haven't had much opportunity to use the steal button um, in practice. And the other is the, the physics, I think, are... I don't know if they're better necessarily, but they at least are better for what the way that I play. Uh, the Genesis version was really floaty. I just found myself like running in for rebounds and just sailing out of bounds. I wonder if the play that's called affects the team's chemistry. It's possible. I mean, I was doing more on the fly calling myself um, earlier in the season. Um, when I want people to stand in different positions before I realized that they weren't. If you didn't, if you don't follow your part of the script, they don't follow theirs. At least not in a predictable way. Um, so, certainly could be. Yeah, they tend to eat up a lot of clock late game, even when they're trailing by this much. Or even when it's a close game. We had an early season game, we only won by two. And even when we were up, they were still, you know, holding the ball. I'm not sure what exactly they were waiting for. 
Opa! I forgot he made the shot. Went to grab a drink. Didn't have time for it. Thank me. How's he doing? In retrospect, it's hard to fathom how I lost two games. Defensive AI is terrible in 98. The players don't intentional foul in the final seconds of the close game. Nope, that is certainly true here as well, as you might imagine. I think he needs at least 12 more. Seems like he'll get there. The uh, second game we lost was really the, the heartbreaker. The first time I hadn't really figured out the lineup thing. So, like, I let, I let lineups run for too long when they weren't doing anything, figuring it would get better. But I knew better by the Portland game. I'm not really sure. I think we just got in too much of a hole. Um, we were trying to get uh, Stoudemire to score 100 points. That was another project we had during the season, which we have it. We did achieve that one. Uh, every player on this on my roster has scored over 100 points in a single game at some point. Man, Orlando coming back in force. They really don't want Pinkney on that leaderboard. Um yeah, Stoudemire, it took two attempts because the first time we did it was one of the games we lost. I, I did give up on it partway through, but we just we couldn't find a lineup that clicked after that. I was able to close the gap a little bit, but um, too long on the side project. Now, of course, there was the third game we lost, but that was the uh, April Fool's Day stream where we were playing 90, uh, Live 96 for the Game Boy, for the Super Game Boy. So that doesn't really count. Heartbreaker, though. When did I start the season? I started it in October. Um, so I ran this, uh, I streamed three nights a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, um, mostly one game. We did a few double headers here and there, um, but the idea was to run it alongside um, the regular NBA season. Like my, I had backed it out so that the game that we probably win the championship will be when the actual NBA finals was. And uh, well, that didn't turn out exactly as I'd hoped. We are still here. We did not suspend our season. We only suspended it when our battery died. See, our whole ar archive is uh, up on YouTube as well. I don't have enough uh, viewers to have a vanity URL, but my user is Nostalgia Chicago 3. And if you search Let's Plays for NBA Live 96, there's not a ton of them for some reason. Can't fathom why. COVID killed my battery. Hey, you said it, not me. As Fitz said when it happened, there was uh, only in 2020 would I get. It was not that I didn't test it with the multimeter. I actually did change the battery before the season started because I didn't want that to happen. Um, but I just put it in and tried it because I figured these batteries have a 10-year life on them. If it works at all, I should be able to get seven months out of it. And I got five and a half. So I did end up uh, getting a multimeter to test it after the fact. And there was, uh, sure enough, it wasn't like dead, dead, but... There were voltage drops, not enough to maintain our record. Oof. There we go. How are we doing? Sixty-two. So you need two more baskets to be on the safe side. And how much time we got? Minute thirty-six. This actually might be tight. So we'll see, and some of my other two patrons usually prefer don't ah stupid. Um, usually prefer to have their buckets purchased uh, from Muggsy Bogues, but it looks like I am out of time for that. So they'll have to settle for Ed Pinkney's history making two buckets over Shaq. That one goes out to Tim Troy, humanitarian and philanthropist, a patron at our buy a bucket here. Thank you, Mr. Troy. Buying me that bucket. And here we go. That one goes out. Dr. Ambassador Dortmunder. We've gotten there. Also patron at our buy a bucket tier. 
Sorry for grouping them so close together, gentlemen. But I want to take for granted that we'll get any more. There you go, Davis. Put that away. Nope. Report. Looks like we lost DC Kaufman somewhere along the line. I hope he was not killed by the Final Fantasy VII boss. Gone but not forgotten. Never forget. DC Kaufman. I think he sure can dunk. Real life, the Raptors sent him to Philadelphia in the Sharon Wright trade, but due to the direct intervention of Spitz the Greatest, he has remained a Toronto Raptor. Oh, that looks good too! Just toying with me, Pinkney. There we go. 70 point victory. Player of the game, Ed Pink. Skin of his teeth, he remains. Good game. Thank you, Coach Crab. Thanks for being here. Thanks for chatting. Always nice to see a new face. You know. Metaphorically. See how we did here. Got to look at the stats because the game doesn't save the game stats. Uh, points, Bill already knew that. Field goal percentage. Rough night for Dale Ellis. Previously on the leaderboard. Probably not after that. We didn't go to the line. Precious few offensive rebounds. Not a great rebounding night in general. So that happens. Lots of steals. Eight assists from Ugly Bogues. One thing I don't like about there's many things I don't like about these stats, but one of them is they don't track turnovers. And they do track turnovers because it'll show it on like a little broadcast pop-up during the game sometimes, but they don't show you afterwards. Their leading scorer was Horace Grant. Not betting. Game never stops running. Did they not make a three-point shot this entire game? They did. For third percentage, we also had John Kotkak miss. I need to scroll up to that. Precious few blocks. That might be a record for uh, fewest blocks. Actually, the defense usually. Especially when I'm uh, in the paint zone. Alright, here's our shot summary. Look at that. Beautiful spread. If that's not the future, I don't know what is. So, the 86% in the first. They tap it 60% all from three in the second quarter. Terrible. Yeah, so we did pretty well there. About two points. Alright, so I guess two to some threes. Just depending on who I was during the game. Quick look by player. Pinkney unfortunately missed his two threes, bringing us down. Ellis, just, I, I don't know what to do with that. Don't even know. Davis, solid shooting night. Murray, solid shooting night. And I think I took almost all the shots. I did. Only let the guy have three tonight. That's it for that. Well, I don't know why it prompts us to save now, because uh, I'm going to have to save again. So, quick look at how the playoff tree is looking. So you can see, also, uh, Coach Trev, if you weren't here, upset of the century, Boston Celtics over Chicago Bulls. And we did create Jordan. He is on the team. I don't know what happened. Uh, Knicks number two seed, our likely opponent in the Eastern Finals. Um, uh, much more of a competition in the West. So, via anybody series out there. We'll uh, take a look at the playoff leaderboards real quick. Jordan is well in NBA 1198, but he's not that good. So go figure. So there you go. We have our six players now on points per game leaderboard. Minutes per game, we're not going to be there for an eight minute quarter. Sharon Wright has not missed a shot in the playoffs. And yeah, Ellis did fall off after that terrible performance. We haven't been to the line enough on there. Uh, Ellis still on the three point one, though, uh, along with our other three, uh, three point shooters. 
Murray doing much better in the playoffs than the regular season. Won't see us on the rebounding forward side. Um, Sharon Wright challenging Elijah Wan for the block shot title. And Eric Murdoch, our point guard, holding down the David Stoudemire position. You know, assists, that probably won't be us either. There we go. Right, so that's it for us. We'll save before I forget to. There we go. Game two, round two. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I'm Nostalgia Goggle for three. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow night for game two against the East Orlando Magic. Uh, have a good night. Take care of yourself. Have a good day, I guess, whatever time it is. Watching. Um, yeah, enjoy.